Uh, welcome, everybody. My name is Valerie Bagley. As Sonia said, I am the coordinator for CNSM Student Support. And um, on this campus, that is a title that kind of encompasses quite a bit. I run the Jensen SAS Tutoring Center, which I'm sure we will uh, touch on a little bit here, as well as the Lindgren Math Tutoring Center. Um, I also work with our peer mentors, and I work with a number of workshops that we hold, also with our health professions advisor, research coordinator. And then for many of you, uh, your names look familiar. You are in my NSCI 198 course. So um, this is the face of the person that uh, does that website for you. Um, so with that being said, what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to have all of our presenters uh, talk to you today, just do a quick introduction, let them know a little bit about who, uh, let you know a little bit about who they are. And what we're going to be doing is I have a couple of questions prepped and prepared uh, to ask them to kind of get this started. But if you have questions for these faculty members at any point about, you know, should I be reading the textbook? You know, how do I pay attention in class? How do I go to office hours? That sort of thing please feel free to type that question into the chat feature and then I'll go ahead and ask it to the audience or to the panelists. Um, as Sonia said, if you do have any questions that you would prefer to ask like in person, you're welcome to use the little raise your hand feature and then we'll call on you um, and get you in. Um, the something else was gonna happen. Oh, I forget what it was. It's late in the day, guys. I appreciate you guys joining us. So I am going to have the presenters introduce themselves and we will start with Mata. Hi, my name is Mata. And I am a mathematics lecturer. I teach freshman level math courses um, and I've been teaching at Castle Long Beach for eight years. Uh, this semester I am teaching Math 112A, which is a large lecture for pre-calculus and pretty much um, all my students are freshmen, uh, first year freshman students. And I'm also teaching Calculus 1. And I also help uh, run the Lingering Tutoring Center, um, which is the math center with Valerie. Andrea? Hello. Um, my name is Andrea. I'm from chemistry and um, I teach Chem 111A and B. So, again, mostly freshmen and Cummings. You know. Lindsay. Hi, my name is Lindsay Darjani, and I am a lecturer in the biology department. And I teach uh, right now, I'm doing marine biology, intro to marine bio, and the first half of the ecology physiology course, which is the last biology class for our bio majors or intro classes. Awesome, well, thank you and welcome. So um, I'm just gonna jump straight in and, and ask, I think a question that I know I have made kind of first and foremost in the NSCR 198 class, but I think a lot of the students are wondering as well. And that is like, how do students communicate with you? How do you like it best? Do you like emails? Do you like them coming to office hours? What is your preference? I prefer office hours. Um, there's something to do with face-to-face, -face. even though right now we only see half of your face, you know, when, <laughs> when you're in office hours. Um, but still, you know, be able to make eye contact and then be able to point on a piece of paper for me is important. You know, this is how I did it. I don't get it. You know, I can put on a piece of paper to show you what's happening. Um, I personally, I kind of email communication is okay, but if you shoot a chemistry problem over email, it's kind of hard to reply. So it makes it a little difficult. Um, but you know, Zoom is a good thing. You know, if we really need to pick a, uh, make the appointment, we could, you know, Zoom at any time. So. So it's been helpful, but people like person personal interaction would be what I prefer. Um, personally, um, I always tell my students this is like the first thing I say um, when I introduce. 
um, myself and my uh, in my classes that I also like the one-on-one uh, -on -one interaction. So um, I like to, especially because I have a large lecture that I teach, um, it's just easier if students have any questions to kind of stay after class and ask their questions and uh, kind of build that connection with their instructor. I also encourage office hours a lot. I tell my students just walk in and just say hi, introduce yourself. Um, sometimes I don't remember names. I'm just not very good at that, but I do remember faces. So uh, the more students come in, you know, for us instructors to get to know them, the easier your guests for us to connect with you and answer your questions and help you out with um, any questions you guys have. But of course, if that's not feasible uh, for students, then I always tell them the second way would be to um, email your instructors. And then when you are emailing your instructors, you want to you know, make sure you put in details. Um, if you have any specific questions, you write that specific question, say which class you're from. Um, you know, most most instructors teach them more than one class, and even if they teach the same class, they might have different sections. So you want to put a lot of details in the email so you get a quicker response. Um, and then uh, for some classes, I've noticed um, instructors have discussion boards. So that's what, what I do for my calculus class. I said, okay, if you have any questions, just put your question in the discussion board and, um, you know, I can answer you in that way. It might be another student's question as well. I echo all those things. Those are all great. I definitely, you know, like they said, you know, teaching one to two classes for us lecturers looks like having up to, I did a quick calculation between all of my students and the grad students that I manage roughly like 300 students. So if you shoot me an email that doesn't tell me what class you're in, I have to then like spend more time pulling that out of you to answer your question. Um, so I definitely would you know, I appreciate even quick questions before or after class. Um, but I would say also on top of all those things, utilize the TA office hours. So most of the lab instructors or section instructors have to have their own set of office hours. And oftentimes like for our classes, we make everyone's office hours available to the whole class. So you're able to go to like a different instructor if that works better for your schedule. And most of us, I keep mine here, we have a log of students who come and visit us. So I write down your name, what class you're in, and I have proof like, hey, if this student at the end of the semester is like super borderline with their grade, I might take a look at my log to see like who put in that extra effort to um, come to office hours and really, you know, dig into those questions mm -hmm. they didn't understand. And I, right now I have half of my office hours in person and then I hold some online because Zoom still works well. And I would say, take advantage of that. Most of us too have a, like a set turnaround time for our emails, right? So I would say like, you know, don't expect, um, or expect at least like a 24 hour turnaround time and so in that case, a lot of times it's just not enough time and you may need to get your question answered before a test or before a homework's due. So definitely stopping in in person is the way to go. Awesome. Uh, so we are wrapping up the fourth week of classes, I believe. So we are the, these, uh, many of these students, most of these students are first year students. So they are just kind of getting in the swing of things. And do you have any advice for them as they start to settle into this semester? I was going to say, don't panic. <laughs> Yet. <laughs> I mean, I already gave both my exams. So I'm seeing a lot of panicking students and um, so don't panic yet. I mean, this fourth week, it, it sounds a lot, sounds like it's a lot, but you know, you can, well, if we look forward to Christmas break, then it's, you know, we're fourth week into it. It's, you know, 11 weeks left, um, but you can also look at it. We're only fourth week into it. There's still 11 weeks to catch up. Um, and so, you know, for most of you, I'm, I'm pretty sure you're still trying to like figure out where things are um, and trying to figure out how to approach your professors or, you know, how to even approach your TAs or what things are like. Um, but, and at this point, you probably already have an idea what your schedules are like, like how many hours do I have to work, um, my responsibilities at home, my responsibilities at school, 
you know, how heavy my load really is. I mean, if you're sitting in this room, most likely, you know, your loads are pretty big with, you know, math, chem, bio, you know, physics courses. And so, you know, try to get a hang of it. So right now it's a time where you actually have a pause on what's happening. And so, you know, figure it out and then just keep on going forward. So don't, don't stress out yet, you know, and, and you'll be okay. Yeah, I think the fourth week is a good week to kind of have an idea of what your weekly schedule is going to be. So um, I would say um, definitely just uh, being organized. It's like somehow um, doing, uh, like managing your time between, okay, so how much time do I'm spending in class? Now, how much time do I need to spend outside of class to get um, familiar with the concepts and study time? Um, do you work? Do you not work? Do you have family commitment? Not so just organizing your time. And then I think you guys are have, uh, there's a, they offer a time management workshop, which can help you to kind of, um, kind of view on how you can do that. Um, and also connecting like, at, so not only connecting with your instructors, but connecting with your classmates. So for example, I do a lots and lots of group work in my you know, first year freshman students just because I want my, my students to kind of get to know each other. You never know who you're going to take some, some of your classes, next classes, you're going to see the same exact faces. So it's good to have a support system, not only your instructors and the TAs, but um, friends in class or even just classmates that you can study with. And one thing that I've noticed, for example, this year, it's like every time I ask my students to work together, they're just quiet and they feel probably shy, uncomfortable, maybe Maybe they're not used to um, this setting in high school. So um, just, you know, pushing yourself to do some group work and connecting when your instructors are actually actively, um, you know, um, uh, encouraging it in class, that would be a really good idea to kind of have that support system and uh, using resources on campus. For example, we do have tutoring centers where students can take advantage of that. Um, we have the learning center, which they offer workshops. So anything that you think you're struggling with or you need help with, there is some sort of help for you on campus um, and of course as I mentioned before utilizing office hours those all sound good to me <laughs> I'm just as the third I'm, I'm probably just going to echo a lot of what you guys said but um, the one thing I was going to say especially for a science major is to you know our major is very demanding and um, one piece of advice that I give my students is to treat it sort of like a job, right? You show up in the morning, you spend your time on campus when you're not in class, you're studying, maybe you go for a run during your lunch break, um, take those kind of built in breaks that like a work schedule would normally give you and and work within those times and that will help build some routine if you are struggling with like building a routine I just I kind of treat it like a nine to five or an eight to four um, that especially helps with trying to find parking on campus too if you get here early you get to park and then maybe you go study for a little bit before your class and then after your class and um, yeah I would say also to to sometimes I see students in this fourth week of, you know, heading into an exam or if an exam just passed, they tend to let their lab or their lecture suffer for one or the other. Um, typically the labs are weighted as a portion of your lecture exam. So I would say like, don't let either of those suffer, but try to put um, equal, you know, effort into both. In many classes, if you don't pass the lab, you end up not being able to pass the lecture conjointly. So um, yeah, utilize all of those resources and kind of take a step back to look at what your needs might be in terms of um, either finding a routine or you know building in those healthy study habits. But yeah, that's, that's kind of it, that's all I would say to that. Absolutely. So um, as a reminder to everyone in the audience, if you have any questions, feel free to go ahead and put it in the chat or you're welcome to uh, raise your hand on Zoom and, and we should be able to see you and we'll call on you. Um, but while we're waiting for that, um, I think, Andrea, you kind of brought up that you've given your first tests. And so a lot of students in a lot of their classes are getting their first test back and they are either exactly where they hoped they would be, or maybe they weren't as successful as they wanted them to be. So what is, 
what is your suggestion with what to do once they get a test back? I think a lot of students just like put the test in their binder and like go on their merry way. But do you have any tips for what students should be doing when they receive their test yeah. back? Yeah, um, every, every lecturer, every professor, every instructor has sort of like a different thing with how they return their test. Um, some return Scantron, but not the exam. Some returns the exam, but not the Scantron. Um, and some just neither, you know? And so I think, but regardless of how the test was returned to you, or what is returned to you, um, you can always approach your TAs or approach your professors and say, hey, can I take a look at my test? Can we kind of, you know, can I see what I did wrong? Um, and that opportunity, would, you know, at least for us, we always provide it for the students to come in and we get to talk. And, and I think, um, for for a lot for we we'll always give that talk right like okay you know if you're a certain percentage you gotta work harder um, things like that but I think the most important thing is once you get your grade um, once you get your test go over it you know things that you miss and make sure that you know why you miss them um, it's a relearning process if you know I, I like to tell my students you know if your grades aren't not good but when you take a look at your exam and you realize well, oh my gosh those are all kind of like silly mistakes you know, could have done them all had it not been, you know, the pressure of the test or, you know, had I sleep a little more, then those are good news for me. Uh, that means you know what you're doing. It would just be like at that moment, you're kind of like too nervous for it. Then we'll work on your nerve, right? But, but if when you go over the things, you go, hey, I, I really don't know this. Okay, then we need to figure out like how do we review those stuff or what are the things that you lack? Um, but it will be a lot easier if you let your TA and your professor talk to us, you know, then we can probably tell you what you need to do a lot faster than for you to try to take another four weeks to figure out until the next test, you know, and, and that will be a little late. So if you, once you finish a test, like a grade or not, come and figure out what you did wrong, you know, get a little prescription from us. This is what you should do and follow it along. And a lot of times they work, you know, it's like antibiotics, you take it third day, you'll know if it works. And if it doesn't, then, then okay, then we give you, instead of give you a broad spectrum, we have to figure out exactly what you need. Um, so, so that's, that's, but definitely don't, don't give up. Um, a lot of people is like, oh my gosh, this is it. Like, don't give up. All, all we, you know, it's, it's doable. But I think what happened after first test and is, is if you heard all that we were talking about, it, it was mainly on time management. And then, and then I saw this, um, the Thrive workshop pop up on chat. Uh, we weren't told to uh, publicize that. So it was just by chance that we're talking about time management because it's important. Um, I think by fourth week, you since you already have sort of a handle on your own schedule, um, and this is being a science classes that you're taking, um, you need to decide the priority, like what is important. Um, so your, I think for us, our job as teachers and your jobs are students. And so I really like what Lindsay says, treat this as a job, uh, treat this as your work. Um, then that means if this is very important to you, then you need to rearrange your schedule accordingly. Even if it means something may have to go um, because this is your priority right now. You want to finish your courses, you want to take the class, you want to do well, you know, get a good average, move on. You know, and so it kind of gauge where you're at. So I think that's what first test normally sends to people is, okay, so what do I do? You know, what kind of situation am I in? So I haven't given my first test yet. <laughs> so I can kind of talk about how to prep for the first test. So my first test is coming up um, next uh, next week in my math uh, classes. So um, usually, um, I would say if um, for the for, for freshman classes, we usually um, have study guides for students. And um, 
at least for, for my classes, I spend lots and lots of time creating these study guides to kind of give students a starting point of, okay, so what should you focus on and um, how you should um, study for the exam. And I've noticed like, a lot of students, they take it seriously after exam number one. Uh, so I would what I would suggest is that if your professor, if your instructor has prepared a study guide, uh, use it, utilize it, um, take advantage of it. And then of course, um, work on these problems. So maybe some of them you can work on it on your own. Some of them you can go to office hours and get help. Some of them might be discussed during class. So before every exam, I do have a study session. I do have a review session that I um, cover during my class. So I do go over similar questions on um, the exam. So these are the times that if you are um, having trouble with the concept to ask your instructors. And then um, if your uh, professor have not provided you guys with a, um, a study guide, I would say go back to your notes and do like a summary. So for example, in math, we have lots of formulas. So and most likely if you wait until the day before the exam, you're not gonna remember most of them. So what you wanna do is you want to just go section by section, write down the formulas and then do one example similar to the whatever formula you have. So and then create a little uh, study guide for yourself. Um, so, um, so yeah, yeah. And then of course um, you, anything that you're struggling with or if you think that you um, feel like you're not understanding, definitely ask for help, reach out, to, go to office hours so you can, you know, um, get prepared for the exam um, before your first exam. I would say like on an emotional level too, like give yourself um, Beyonce actually had this quote, like when she gets haters, she gives herself like one day to feel bad. And you basically like, yeah, let yourself grieve, let yourself feel those feelings. Um, I was a bad test taker. I never did well on my test. So like this spoke to me when I heard it. So like, let yourself be sad about it. And then the next day, like give yourself one day. And then the next day, like make a plan of how you're going to tackle that issue use that negativity to fuel you to like have that growth mindset that you you know can can do better and make a plan for what that um would look like and i want to echo like andrea's like advocate for yourself too if you like think in your head hey i know i did really well this seems odd like go ask to see the test you know like i'm i just gave out one of my first tests and a student came to me and she's like you know this question was just really weird and your answers didn't make sense and i'm looking at it and i'm like you know what you're totally right like that question's bogus like i'm gonna throw it out so i would say that you know if you are confident in that to advocate for yourself and um and also, you know, many of you are coming, well, many of you are freshmen, so you haven't had classes, but some of my like sophomore students, this is some of their first lectures um, in person. And so like test taking might look different than it did online via Zoom. And so if that's the case, again, like if you need to advocate yourself for yourself, maybe make an appointment with the Bob Murphy Access Center to discuss like possible testing options, like that's available to you if you need reduced distraction or extra time or whatever that might look like to, to speak up for yourself. So one of the other things that I think um, this university has done really well the past four weeks is trying to uh, open up all the possibilities of how to get involved um, to the students, whether that be through Week of Welcome or the smorgasbord event that happened this weekend. Um, so I guess my question to you is when you were a freshman in college, uh, were you involved in anything outside of the classroom? And what do you recommend students kind of do to get involved, if anything? Anybody? <laughs> uh, when I was a freshman, so I was an international student. I came here and um, I 
I remember I barely spoke English. So that was like my, um, I was very shy. Um, I didn't like to because it was very different than the high school that I went to. So, um, but I wanted to connect with other students. Yeah. So there was the, my classes and then um, there was something that I wanted to connect to other students. So I, so at Castlet Long Beach, um, and that's what I went, I was a student at Castlet Long Beach as well. Um, I was a transfer student. I joined the International Student uh, Center group. So we were all international students and from different countries. And it just, uh, I related to them just because we talked a lot about our struggles, first semester being at Cal State Long Beach, what did it look like? And it was um, really nice to connect to other students. And then we would, through the international, uh, club uh i get to i got to make a lot of friends and some of them were students from my own major and some were not and it was kind of it was everything except math so it was nice to kind of you know get familiar with okay so what is there to do at in long beach what is there to do on campus and just to kind of get just have some sort of support and feel that there are students that are going through similar experiences as you um that you can connect with them. So I was a math major. Um, my first, first math test that I took, I will never forget this. The first quiz I took, I got a zero on it. And I always knew I wanted to get into teaching. And the reason was because I didn't know, um, I, I didn't know what a rectangle was. So I was, it was all these word problems and I barely spoke English. So, you know, it was, so I spoke to my professor and I said, okay, can I bring a day? with me so there were no smartphones during those times and you know it was just a very um, I felt very um you know disappointed in myself and then when I would go to my you know the students that were in that club and I would talk to them so they would give me a lot of pointers for example they would tell me okay so let your instructor know that your English is not your first language so your instructor doesn't know that they have so many students in the class um this is how, where you can go to get help this is where the tutoring center is. so just like a lots and lots of support outside of um class yeah but that was a long time ago so I barely remember <laughs> but I remember there was like lots of you know activities that we used to do together what was your question again Valerie sorry yeah what were what your freshman year in college did you get involved in anything outside of the classroom or what do you recommend these students do if anything yeah. Yeah, I would say to like get involved with things that like give you life and like a levity because like, let's be real organic chemistry and math and physics, those are pretty heavy. Um, so depending on your major, like for me, it was marine biology. So I'm pretty nerdy. So of course I like how I wanted to spend my free time was like um, dissecting muscles from the inner title, but it also came with like a field component where we got to go up and down the coastline and collect marine organisms to bring back to the lab. And so I got to be outside, which is great for my vitamin D and my mental health, uh, but it also was helping me with experience toward my degree. Um, so I would encourage you guys to like take a step outside of campus. I mean, that's just one way to do it, you know, but um, to do something that's like life-giving, inspiring, and also like would fuel you, right, to the why question. Like, why are all we, why am I doing this? Why am I studying so much and taking all these hard classes? Well, because I want to, you know, protect our coastline one day and I need to have that degree to be able to make informed decisions on, you know, um, my coastline or something like that. So that would be one suggestion mm -hmm. is to maybe do a volunteer internship um, with something that's closely related to what you want to be doing one day in the future. And one thing that I will say to that, and I went ahead and put the put the link in the uh, chat for you guys, but one of the websites that we highly recommend if you are looking to get involved on campus in a variety of ways is our Beach Sync which is kind of like a social media platform for the student clubs and organizations on campus. And you can actually also search the clubs and organizations and you can search them by major. So we have a Marine Biology Student Association. You can search them by, um, I think they're uh, 
cultural groups. So uh, that would be potentially where you're going to find the international students. You might find the, uh, you know, a, a club specific, uh, Los Hermanos Mira. Sorry, I'm saying it all wrong. Hermanas Unidas. Um, there's all sorts of different clubs that you can join. And there's also social clubs. I mean, we've got video game clubs. We've got, um, I think there's some fashion clubs. There's all sorts of things that you can do. So this is a great website for you to use and go to. Um, just kind of check it out. And you can also find out more about when clubs and organizations have their um, uh, meetings and how to get a hold of the the leadership within the clubs. Val, did you mention the health professions? I have not mentioned that yet. Okay, yeah. It's so uh, pre-health at the beach is also on beach sink. So if you are interested in the medical field, uh, you know, uh, definitely visit that because that's where you need to start. There are schedules. If you are a science student, um, you'll you'll come to realize that your studying pattern or your schedule is very different from your non-science student schedules. Um, you know, there'll be times they can, they, they will be like, let's go and watch like the first showing of a certain movie. And you'll be like, I need to do my lab report. Um, so there's a lot of times you're just like, you, you're, you're, you're not in sync with your other friends. Um, so we will always recommend, you know, make good friends, you, you have the labs, you know, and you see each other a lot. If you're in biology, most likely you will start seeing each other since Chem 11 day, Chem 90, Bio 211, Bio 212. You will see old Chem, everyone, you grew up together. And so make friends uh, among yourselves because um, then you understand each other. Your, your schedules will be in sync with each other. And I've seen a lot of what a lot of grad students do is once they kind of become very good friends, they will go work out together. They will go rock climbing together. Um, and, you know, you get to do some, you know, do something with your friends. Um, but I think what instinctively came into my mind is you still need to pace yourself and watch your own timing, your time management. Like, you know, I'm going to join a club and I'm going to have so much fun. I'll start partying and, you know, goodbye. Great. You know, and that's not, you know, that's, that's not good. So, but, you know, someone actually suggested you know, if you really don't have time, take a PE class, like a running or walking class. Mm -hmm. And so you give yourself that discipline, um, you know, that three, three times a week, you go there, you walk for an hour, you know, something like that. And it has students who, it's really funny how they did this. They would do study groups at night. And I asked them, how do you, like, how do you guys stay awake for that long? And, and they say, well, when we're tired, we all run the stairs up and down, up and down, up and down to get our muscles going and we'll come back to study more. I mean, people find ways to like have fun. So, um, and enjoy your friends, enjoy your classmates, you know, because you, you, you're in this, it's a lifestyle, you know, science is a lifestyle and, and, you know, you're, you're in the transformation process, you know, so. And I would, I would definitely echo what um, Andrea said with, um, if, if this isn't the semester for you to get involved, that's okay. Uh, it is a lot of changes that you have been experiencing this semester. Um, and especially as you're starting to understand what grades look like after your first test, you'll understand if you need to make any adjustments to your um to your study schedule and to your uh, classroom kind of motivation and focus. And so if you decide not to join a club this year, you don't have to worry because that week of welcome that we have um, a couple of weeks ago out in front of the bookstore and, and all the way up to the library, we actually have that every single semester. So if this semester isn't it for you, we've got next semester. Um, I know a lot of uh, CNSM students who um, are really interested in joining Greek life, so fraternities and sororities, but as Andrea said, sometimes it can, doesn't, the schedule doesn't always match up with being a CNSM student, and so um, my experience with that in regards to the tutors that I have, because I have quite a few tutors in Greek life that are also CNSM students, but most of them didn't join until their sophomore year, um, they didn't join Greek life because they wanted to get their foot under them. They wanted to get a better understanding of what would be required of them in the classroom before they joined. So um, if you 
you know, decide not to join anything this semester, that's okay. You're not late. You're not missing out. You are getting a chance to meet those classmates and understand what routines are going to make you successful. And then, um, and then you're able to uh, explore other aspects of the university in the coming semesters. So here is a question for you guys that, um, as I said, we just went over an NSCI this, this week, and that is textbooks. Um, some students didn't buy textbooks, even though they were asked to. Some students haven't cracked open their textbook yet, and some students have read it front to back. Do you have any recommendations for how students should be using textbooks um, along with lectures in the class? I can speak to this a little bit. My subject is probably different than Andrea or Matab. You guys have like equations and things like that. But with our textbook, we offer like a e-text version. So it's a mobile version. So I would say like, you know, try to just get through the material any way you can. If that's buying the book, great. But like, they have a lot of great apps now, like this is the Pearson app, for example, and my students can just anywhere they are just click on their textbook and start reading their chapters. Oh, joy. Right. Uh, but then what's cool is there's also an option to listen to it. So even if they want to like combine um, the material, they can go for a walk and play chapter 37 on angiosperm reproduction, right, or population ecology, they can at least listen to it. And that's really key is getting that information before you head into lecture, so that in lecture, you're piecing it together, you're honing in on what the lecturer really wants you to know, right? I'm using my textbook right now as a like this is a big fat textbook I can't possibly expect my students to memorize every single thing in here so reading it before you come to lecture coming to lecture to be able to then focus on and really see test your understanding um, is going to help but I would utilize those tools that come with you know um, like an ebook or a smart book or like being able to listen to it and maybe you know use that while you go for a walk or a run or while you're commuting to campus i would definitely recommend reading a textbook um you pay a lot of money for it so make sure you read them um it's it's actually very important i think there, you know, different different professors may have different ways of asking us to utilize the book. Uh, but at least I know for Cam, um, reading a book is almost it's essential. Um, we, if you're taking one of an A, you can probably make your way through A without reading a textbook. But once you get to one of them B, it's almost like you, you cannot live without it. You do have to read it. So what it does, though, either way is fine. There you know, if you are comfortable reading beforehand, so at least for science classes, you know, and it's not gonna bother you first time through when you read it and you don't understand it and you don't get discouraged easily, then great, read it beforehand, go into lecture. So text, uh, reading a textbook is gonna be the first run or first exposure to the topic. And then going to lecture becomes your second exposure to the, to the topic. And so they should reinforce each other, things that didn't make sense then when you were first reading them, the lecture will enhance it. Um, but I know for many of us, especially chemistry textbook, it's a very daunting task. Um, it's very discouraging because you go five pages for like a 40 minute pace and you just like have no idea what I just read. Um, I got it, it's okay, been there, right? So flip it, go to lecture first, let lecture be the first round, but let lecture be your first exposure then you go back to textbook, you read the textbook, now textbook is not as scary because you already heard those words. You know what, at least a little bit of what those things meant. And then your textbook then will enhance the lecture. Um, but it definitely let it be a, you know, two runs. So two exposures to the, to the subject. And another thing I think I've been telling the student is that, uh, especially for chemistry, I know math is some way, it's not something you can cram for. Um, so, you know, so you need to 
be able to pace yourself. And what we found is doing it in small chunks. Um, you know, each chapter of, I think for any subject, it's at least 20 pages, you know, at least starting 20 pages. And so that's a lot to cram in one night. Um, and our attention span is so short, you know, TikTok now is what, 40 seconds. And so we don't, we can't sit for any longer than that. And so um, pace yourself, go to lecture while you read the amount that is for that day's lecture work, maybe a section, two sections, do the homeworks on those and understand what's going on. Then it will build on that for the next lecture, read that requirement listen, re rewrite your lecture notes, organize them, make sure you understand what's going on, then do the homework on those. And that way, brick by brick, we'll be able to build a pretty strong wall. Um, if you try to build a wall all together in one night, the wall is gonna crumble because your mortar doesn't have time, doesn't have enough time to dry. Um, and then you get really confused when we send you a big question on the test. You'd be like, what is this? You know, and our answer will be, it's on the homework. You know, but then you're like, but I never seen this before. You know, so don't cram it, do a little bit, pace yourself right after lecture. While you still remember, right, what your professor was saying, reorganize your notes, rewrite them, right? Um, I used to say do it until you can teach a teddy bear. And then um, and then you then you read the book or you read it before. It's either way, understand the material, do the homework on them. Good. That's one one roll of brick that we just laid step back, enjoy, go have fun, go to the beach. You know, let the water dry. Next lecture, we'll do next layer. And that way you don't feel pressure and cramp. But book is definitely, definitely good. And I'm assuming the math, the math textbook is probably helpful. Um, so, so what, one thing we've done for our freshman classes is, um, so everything that was said was great. Um, we, or maybe I should just, just talk about my own classes. I personally, I don't util, utilize a textbook as much just because it's like the first time, maybe a lot of students are just getting used to taking a math class in, um, in, at a, in a university setting. So, so we do a lot of, we provide you with a lot of information or we make lecture notes for students. And then it gives you a reference that, so if you need extra practice or if you need a little bit more understanding, this is where you can go and um, receive information from the book. So we'll tell you specific uh, book pages where you can go get um, extra support and extra help. And um, the A lot of the math uh, authors have started creating videos, um, just like how um, the other instructor, um, the attention span of a, a lot of us are just like way shorter and shorter. Um, so three minute videos, four minute videos, watch this. It's um, similar to what the textbook is saying um, for those of us that are a little bit more um, like of, like more um, auditory and we, we learned in that manner. So um, yeah, so that's all I have to say. Excellent. Um, okay, so we are nearing the end of our workshop. We did get an audience question, so I'm going to make sure I ask that. And if you have any last minute questions, please feel free to send those in. Um, so here is the audience question. Um, what are the best ways to help with testing anxiety or like pace on an exam? Um, this student in particular took a chemistry exam and had a difficult time focusing despite confidence in the material. Um, so it was all about the nerves. So do you guys have any suggestions for how to how to kind of beat that testing anxiety? Is that a cue that I should come in? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think I think first first thing what I normally would ask, you know, if any student comes in and say, you know, I freak out on the test, what do I do? Um, I think I would go first thing is do does that happen? with other tests as well. Um, if, if you normally get really nervous with all the tests, um, then I think Lindsay mentioned that it would be a good idea to go to BMAC and then, and then see if there is alternative options that was more suitable you know, for you as you take the test. This may be a little bit longer, maybe in isolated space, um, quieter, so may, maybe that with less distraction um, that will come down. It is it is very stressful taking a test with 170 people in the room. Um, you're crammed. 
And then the person next to you may be so nervous and they're tapping their pencil like 20 counts a minute. Um, and your whole table shakes, right? We all know whole science buildings, it's a roll of tables. Um, so it, it really only adds the nervousness of things. Um, how, do you, how do you overcome that? Um, I think the, how you prep for it, first of all, like, you know, are you prep enough to, like, did you study for the test? You know, if you're confident with what you did, that's one thing. Two is we all have like study, study guides or practice tests. Um, and it would be a good idea to take the practice test as a test beforehand. Um, so as we study, don't use it as a study guide, but actually time yourself on it. So like, for example, for chemistry tests, we normally do a two minute per bomb average. And so it will be a good, a good way is you look at the practice test, move on, don't, don't like focus on that for too long because there are still other questions you need to attend to. So just skip it, go down. And then when you're done with everything, come back and do the ones you cannot do. And so if you do this, then you're not gonna miss as many at the end. Um, you know, there's always going to be questions that takes you only 10 seconds and some will need three minutes. So, you know, make sure you catch on those free points, you know, local free points, get those first, you know, but if those are number 25 and you get stuck in front and not move on, then you miss that free point in the back. Um, so, so I will, I will do that. Um, and, it, but it's, it's really, yeah, it's, there's no one way to say I'm not nervous on the test, uh, but, you know, Stay calm, you know, um, and you're trying to find your own study habits and your own like style to this. I don't know if that's helpful. Incredibly helpful. Um, okay, we actually had one other question come through and then we're gonna go ahead and wrap this up so that we meet the time today. But um, if the, uh, the faculty here are open to it and you want to put your email address in the chat function if people have any other questions, um, I would encourage you to do that and then I'll also put mine in there and you're welcome to get in touch with me and then I can also get it out to um, various faculty members. Um, so the final question that has come through um, kind of leans back to the question we had a little bit earlier about uh, kind of doing that social life and that time management. Um, how do you find yourself managing your social life while being a freshman and overwhelmed and in classes? Do you do you have any advice? Like you've talked a little bit about the time management. Is there any other pieces? It seems like a really um, you know deep topic that the students um, are facing right now. I think finding um, th this was mentioned before, but finding friends or meeting people that have the same interests as you um not only um outside of class but the same students that have the same lifestyle as you for example um it was for me when i was um my during my freshman year yeah i was very active um active outside of my just school so i had my like school friends and then i had outside and i noticed at some point we were not on the same path so what i try to do is connect with classmates and students that i could spend time outside and have my social life with them and um you know we we have similar interests when it comes to our major classes and study habits so even if it's that exactly what, um, you know, the other instructors mentioned, it's like the 10 minutes or 15 minutes that you want to, you know, take a walk or do something, you have somebody, because if you notice that if you want to have a lot of friends that are not, have, don't have the similar interests as you do, then for example, your test is coming up, your friend might not understand that, that you cannot go out tonight, or you cannot go have for coffee, or you cannot do certain things. So, um, so, you know, it might put a dent in the friendship or family time. So um, just meeting people that have the similar interests as, as you do, I would say. Awesome. And then honestly, I remember you, you can bear, it was a struggle. It was a struggle. Like I'm trying to go back and when I was a student, everything was just a struggle. But the one thing I remember, because I was young, because you guys are young, you're 
you know, you can manage a lot of things. You can manage like having less sleep time, you know, but when you guys get to our, my age, at least now it's just like, no, I can either, I can handle like one thing at a time. So, so yeah, I remember I used to study. I had my study, like the, uh, the fifth floor of the library was where I would spend most of my time with my classmates. And then it was, if there was an event, we would attend the event. And then, um, wake up the next morning and start studying again and attend our classes so um somehow somehow we manage when you have a support system it's 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 completely different yeah you you're gonna have a completely different experience one thing that's helped me even just now into my adulthood and um is to build like the social time around a meal like you know you have to eat like that's one thing we all have to do. And so if I want to see a friend, like I literally have to schedule breakfast, lunch, and dinner with that friend um, to build in like that social time around a space where I normally like would take a break. And so that could be like, hey, let's meet up for coffee and a bagel or, uh, but just to use that natural built-in time that you have to eat to like have some social interaction and friendship and stuff. I'm listening to like, you know, everyone's and including myself too. That's why I didn't say anything because, you know, I think you guys have realized that, you know, science people doesn't have life. <laughs> we, <laughs> we, we need to build around meal times and make appointments with our friends. And then, you know, and, and our friends are the people that are in the same field. Um, but the point is not to not have friends, okay? You can still have all your friends. Um, the point is, I think once you're in science low enough, you realize that we really are quite different from your friends from other majors. Um, the load, the demand of, of, of the, 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 the topic itself. You know, if you choose to be CNSM, uh, you, you're in a very different world than, than other people. And so that's what it makes it hard for us to say, you know, what clubs to join, what things to explore. Um, because it, it is, it's once you, you know, start getting your exam grade back once your lab report starts to sink in, you know, you start to realize that, oh my gosh, I, I don't have time for a lot of things. Um, there was, someone told me that before, um, the three things in life, um, social life, grade, and sleep, you can only have two things at a time. So if you, if you want social life and grade, then you can't, like, you can't sleep. You know what I mean? Like, you can't have all three of them. Something has to suffer. And, and so what I would really recommend is, is that, like what, you know, Matab was saying, make friends that have similar interests, make friends that are in the midst. I remember when I was in, in undergrad, you know, like I have, you have like three hour gap between classes and my buddy and I would run out of the campus to watch a movie and come back. And that would be our break, but that's because we have the same schedule. And so we're able to just say, hey, let's go catch a movie. And so we walk out of the campus, go to the movie. I always remember, it's so fun. You know, and you go watch a movie and you come back knowing you have a class in three hours, but you know, you, you, get, you go catch a movie then. And I think that's something that you will learn to adjust, you know, and provided a lot of us work too. So now you have to put that in there. Um, so I think that's why even from the beginning, we kept on saying, we keep on mentioning time management, time management, time management. Um, it's because while we all have the heart to conquer the world, uh, we don't have enough time to conquer everything. And so, especially when you choose to be CNSM, might as well spend your time with us, coming to office hours. <laughs> you know, we'll be your best friend, really. You know? And then you get to know us, we know who you are. We can watch you for four years because we're all freshman teachers, you know? And then at the end of your career, you need a recommendation, we actually know who you are. You know what I mean? And so see, that's like your purpose, sir. <laughs> you know, so, a, fr yeah. a friend who can write a recommendation letter. It's perfect. Yeah. Um, awesome. Well, thank you guys so much. This has been really informative and I really appreciate it.